Hello everyone, this is CircuitPython Weekly for Tuesday, November 12th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Liz, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday as it did this week with Veterans Day happening yesterday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPython Nisa's role on Discord. There's a shared notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to skip around and view parts of the video that interest you most. And this meeting is held in five parts. First is community news. Second part is state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. Third part is hug reports. Fourth part, status updates. Fifth part is in the weeds. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will go. And with that, I will get things started with community news. So, in the newsletter this week, MicroPython in Orbit, Philip's story of satellite innovation. Philip Rack, the team leader at the Czech Aerospace Research Center, talks to Inspiring Computing about his journey from engineering to leading the development of attitude and orbit control systems for satellites, including the technical challenges and triumphs like launching satellites and using MATLAB and MicroPython. Philip also shares how they took a selfie from space at their facility and how this achievement inspired future projects. And Project of the Week, a new Python calculator, Peter Misenko writes that the Pi PRCA Python calculator is back with the same dimensions as his Pico computer and the new Pico Boy, a PicoPad clone. All of the devices can do Armachat, CircuitPython, Pico Computer S3, new Mesh Tastic UI, and emulate a ZX Spectrum C64 and Atari 800. And then there was a new learn guide I wanted to highlight, creating custom LED animations from our own Tim C. Uh, if you've ever used the LED animations library in CircuitPython, you know how awesome it is, get really fast and beautiful animations going, but maybe the stock ones haven't been what you're looking for. This guide tells you how to use that library to create your own custom animation. So very handy for everyone who likes LEDs and CircuitPython, which I think there's a lot of overlap there. And these news items and more are available in our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python on hardware project to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub in the Circuit Python Weekly newsletter repository, tag Anne Engineer or hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon or X, or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link. And that is the community news. Next up is State of CircuitPython Libraries and Blinka. And this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core libraries and Blinka. So first up, overall, there were 26 pull requests merged by 12 authors and six reviewers and 33 issues, 33 closed issues by six people, 10 opened by nine people. And then in the core this week, there were nine pull requests merged by six authors, W. Tamura, Jepler, Weblate, Python, Relic, SE, and ADCC. Four reviewers, Dan Halpert, Jepler, Foamy Guy, and Gambler21. There are 24 open pull requests, two closed issues by two people, one open by one person. There are 749 open issues, 
seven active milestones, 13 open issues for 10.0, one open issue for 9.2, 44 open issues for 9.x, and then in the libraries, 22 open issues, long-term 637 open issues, 17 open issues for support, and 15 open issues for third party. No issues um, do not have, all issues are assigned to a milestone right now, which means everyone's staying on top of the issues and triaging. And next, we'd like to have Foamy Guy talk about the libraries. There we go. Yeah, thank you, Liz. Uh, this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, uh, which are uh, found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it may be. Uh, these tend to fall into two major groups, either drivers that help you interface with a particular piece of hardware uh, or helper libraries that allow you to do something at a bit of a higher level without worrying about so much of the uh, minutia in the details. Um, across all of those libraries this week, uh, actually, let me highlight, we have some uh, new stats in the report uh, as of this week, which is kind of cool. So we have the uh, total number of libraries and community libraries. So right now we have 347 uh, Adafruit libraries in, uh, in the bundle, and we also have 159 community uh, libraries in the community bundle, which is really cool to see. Uh, we passed 500 total just recently, and now we have these stats broken out here uh, in the report to see each week. Um, in the past week, we had 17 pull requests merged uh, by seven different authors, uh, a couple of folks whose names are uh, newer to me, so these folks might be uh, newer contributors or just less frequent contributors or maybe just uh, have a name that I haven't uh, happened to see before. Um, uh, Relic SE, Sean McGee, uh, Deval Remy, uh, Mick, Mick Manigill, uh, and uh, Shub Ham 0, uh, 0x13. Um, so thanks to those folks, as well as some of our more usual names that I see on this week, uh, this list from week to week. Um, in reviewers, we had five reviewers for the pull request this week. Thanks to Lady Ada, um, Anne, Dan, and Jeff, and myself. Um, the pull requests that were merged this week were all uh, pretty much on the newer side of things. The oldest one was only six days, and the newest... Uh, several were only a single day old. And that leaves us at the end of the week with 43 pull requests open across these libraries. Uh, the oldest one of those is a draft that's 817 days. The newest one is at four days right now. Um, and in terms of issues, we had 28 issues closed uh, by three people. We had seven new issues opened up by six people. Uh, so we are net down quite a bit on issues. I've been uh, going through a bit of a tear on old issues lately, so that's where a lot of that's coming from. Um, that does leave us at the end of the week with 868 open issues across all the libraries, so still plenty to work on. Uh, and there are 96 of those that are labeled as good first issues, which are ones that have been highlighted as being good for folks who maybe uh, don't have as much experience but want to get started contributing to CircuitPython. Uh, if that sounds like you, the place where you should head is circuitpython.org slash contributing. On that page, there is a list of all the open PRs as well as all the open issues. The first place we tend to point folks who want to get involved uh, is at that list of open PRs. You can take a look through that. There are links there that will take you through to GitHub so that you can see uh, the actual specific PRs. And uh, from there, you can kind of get the code that's a part of that PR. If you've got the hardware for it, you can give it a test. Uh, if you don't have the hardware, but you want to look anyway, that's cool as well. You can just look over the code for logic, uh, syntax, spelling, uh, anything that you are capable of, and you can just leave a comment there on GitHub letting us know that you looked it over and what you found. Uh, if you did have the hardware and you were able to test it out, let us know that as well and how it went. Uh, once you do that a couple of times, if you want to get leveled up to leave official reviews on GitHub, we can um, we can get you involved to be able to do that as well. Um, if you would like to start getting into the coding side of things, uh, on that same page, again, circuitpython.org slash contributing, if you click over to the list of open issues, you'll see a similar looking page which has a big list of links that uh, do go over to GitHub. These ones, however, are linking to open issues rather than pull requests, so they don't have any uh, proposed code or any proposed changes associated with them yet. So that's what they are waiting uh, for someone to step in and work on. Um, so you can find something, again, that you either have an interest in, uh, or especially if you do have the hardware to be able to test out, whatever it is that's good for issues. 
um, click through to GitHub, figure out what the issue is, whether it's uh, fixing a bug or adding a new feature uh, or perhaps making a new example. And um, you would then be able to submit your own pull requests to, uh, to propose the changes that that issue is asking for. Uh, we have a guide for contributing to Git and GitHub. Um, so if you have never done the version control stuff before, we can help you walk through that with the guide. We also have folks who are around throughout the week on Discord who are more than happy to help you get uh, started with this, get spun up on Git or GitHub or any other part of the process uh, for contributing. So um, if you are trying to contribute or you want to contribute, but you feel like there is some thing that is stopping you, uh, please come say hi on the Discord. Let us know what you're interested in, and we can definitely uh, work with you to, uh, to make it possible for you. Um, in terms of the, no, uh, actually, I got so used to going on the, uh, on the trail there. We actually, we removed the library, uh, PyPI stats, so we won't have that section anymore. Um, but I will mention the, the libraries, uh, updated or new within the last seven days. I'll call out the new one, which is over in the community bundle, uh, by Bablock B, the circuit Python MHZ, uh, 19, which I think is a CO2 sensor, uh, is now added over in the, uh, community bundle. So take a look at that if you've got that device. And there are a number of updated libraries, which you can see here uh, in the notes if you'd like to take a look at those. Yeah, so that's what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And thank you for going through those library issues recently. And now I will read about Blinka. Blinka is our compatibility layer for CircuitPython on single board computers like Raspberry Pi. I actually just recently used it in an Adafruit product. Uh, and it always uh, makes things really handy. But this week in Blinka, zero pull requests were merged, but there are six open pull requests, three closed issues by two people, and two opened by two people. So net one, 112 open issues currently, and then PyWheels downloads for last month, 17,664, and number of supported boards, 146. And that is State of Circuit Python libraries and Blinka, Next up is Hug Reports. So Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. So I will kick things off with a group hug, especially with the uh, trying times we are in right now. I always appreciate the people in this community. Uh, and then I will read for Anecdeta and he's text only. Uh, hug report to Jepler for the quick RP2350 SSL fix and for the PR review. And now we'll hear from Foamy Guy. Right. Uh, I have hug reports this week thanks to Justin Cooper, uh, who made a quick change in Learn, uh, the Learn bundling system to handle an issue that I was looking into from GitHub. Um, thanks to Jeff this week for making it easier to test the Unix port of CircuitPython by adding some default uh, arguments to the make command. Um, thanks to Shubham0x13, who has submitted a number of fixes over the past couple of weeks to the display text library, and a uh, group hug for everybody. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And next, we will go into status updates. Quick meeting today. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I will start, and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If a discussion becomes too long for status updates, we can move it to in the weeds. So I have been working on a CircuitPython video synth with the Feather RP2350 and HSTX to DVI output. I'm using a PDM mic as an audio input. I'm doing some FFT math to create some spectrum analyzer style animations. This has always been a goal when I've worked on video synth stuff in the past. I've actually done two on Learn so far, and it was that there wasn't enough time or there wasn't enough space in the program uh, for it to work. So I'm really excited that first of all, it's in CircuitPython, and also I'm able to use FFT to make it um, audio reactive. So very excited about that. Uh, and then yesterday, I wasn't planning to take the holiday off, but I ended up taking it and I spent time getting my PlayStation 2 to work with a software called Open PlayStation Loader. It's homebrew software that lets you play PlayStation 2 game ISO files via network storage. 
And for the past, um, it's probably almost closer to a year rather than months, I've been battling my PS2 to try to get fix its disc reader. And I finally decided to go this route and it works really well. And um, I'm actually using a Raspberry Pi running Open Media Vault as uh, my network storage. So works very well if anyone's into retro gaming. Um, and now we'll hear from Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Liz. I look forward to the uh, guide eventually on the um, synth stuff. That sounds really cool. Um, some of the stuff I've been working on this week, I looked into some issues uh, across several libraries, uh, a few of them drivers uh, in the BMA, uh, BME 680. There was an issue where it would hang infinitely during uh, certain conditions when you tried to initialize it, so I added a timeout to it. And in the BNO, uh, BNO 055, um, there was certain settings that only work if you put it in a config mode before you set them. Uh, so I updated it to automatically put them in that mode. Um, I also submitted some smaller improvements to docs in a few different libraries, uh, image load and clue, uh, namely this week. Um, I this is uh, only on the peripheries of CircuitPython. A couple of the repos were CircuitPython, but this was more uh, wider in the GitHub Adafruit repo world. So I went through and updated the version that um, upload and download artifact actions uses, which is a thing that gets done sometimes from the actions task. Uh, and GitHub is going to deprecate the version they were on. So we updated all those to the newest one. Um, I added how-to instruction links to um, the circuitpython.org uh, pages. So we recently added the ability to have a how-to uh, instructions on the downloads page for each board. Uh, and those are just fed by a line that's in the configuration file inside the circuitpython.org repo. Uh, so I have gone back through and added all of the Adafruit ones. Uh, although I did see just before the meeting, a couple of folks um, threw a few more links for me to add as well. So I'll go back and do the last couple, but we've got the vast majority of them uh, of the Adafruit ones are in there now. So I will mention also if anyone has third-party boards or uh, if you are the owner of a third-party board or you happen to have one and you know where to find the documentation for how to load CircuitPython onto it, uh, we would happily accept PRs from the community as well for third-party uh, boards especially. That's going to be super helpful. So uh, thanks to anyone who wants to help out in that way. Um, and then lastly, on the uh, deep dive last week, I worked on creating a text box widget for the display text library. So uh, historically with display text, the labels would always just grow uh, to however much text you put in them. Um, you could manually wrap it. There's a helper function that lets you wrap it to a certain number of pixels, which uh, kind of helps you achieve this, but there was still some missing pieces. So the new uh, thing that I've created allows you to declare a width and a height up front, and then whatever text you put in there will automatically get wrapped to fit inside that size. And then because it has uh, an explicit width uh, in particular, it can also support alignment. So I was able to make it align to left, right, or center, uh, which is something we don't have today. We can only do uh, left align pretty much with the labels today. So I'm pretty stoked about the ability to center and right align text, uh, even though that's a relatively boring thing. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and that is what I have been up to this week. Thanks. Uh, so that is going to do it for this week's meeting. Uh, this has been CircuitPython Weekly for Tuesday, November 12th, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It'll also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Nisa's role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.